Hello, and I uh, wanted to welcome you to uh, Tech Corner Episode 3. Uh, my name is Steven, and I'm here with Justin. Hello. We're part of the tech team here at Data Video, um, and I wanted to thank you for, for joining us again for, uh, for this episode. Um, today, we wanted to talk to you about HD Base T and um, the technology around it, how you can utilize it, um, and how it kind of ties into some of Data Video's product line. Uh, and we kind of wanted to, to give you some tips on how to alleviate any potential issues. Um, but first, I wanted to tell you that uh, if you have any suggestions for future Tech Corner episodes, um, you can email us at uh, techcorner at datavideo.com, which Justin's kind of highlighting for you there. Um, so we'll be happy to answer any questions that you have uh, on either Facebook Live or YouTube uh, Live. Uh, so if you do enjoy this content, we appreciate if you would give us some uh, Facebook likes uh, and subscribe to our YouTube channel as well. So um, today again, we are uh, streaming to both uh, YouTube and Facebook simultaneously again so that we have good coverage uh, between both platforms because we had some early feedback where some customers weren't comfortable on one platform, so we wanted to be accommodating to, to all of our users. So Feel free uh, to watch it on both at the same time, too. <laughs> yeah, that might be interesting. <laughs> <laughs> so today's topic is HD Base T, and um, we wanted to kind of go over some of the requirements for um, cabling and other things so that you can uh, ensure that you get optimal results. And um, I will be looking down periodically. I'm not trying to ignore you or be rude. Um, what I'm trying to do is make sure that uh, we, I can see any questions that you might have that come up live on the stream so that we can address them um, during this, this, this stream. So let's start out with uh, what is HD Base T? And so I'm going to go ahead and uh, hand that over to Justin so he can kind of give you an overview of HD Base T. Yeah, so HD Base T is a, a convenient standard that combines video power and uh, serial control all over a single cable. So with this, I can do up to uh, Ultra HD 4K uncompressed video. In the case of our uh, PTZ cameras, uh, that are 1080p 60. It'll carry that up to 100 meters. Uh, we'll go into the distance a little more in a bit. On, in addition to that, it also supports uh, power. Uh, it can transmit up to 100 watts, which uh, exceeds the requirements of our cameras, as well as serial control, which would uh, enable RS-422 control over that same cable as well. And with our cameras that have built-in tally lights, it'll transmit the tally info as well to the uh, controller and switcher. So that's a good definition of basically what HD Base T is. Um, you know, it is one of the only technologies that does uh, long reach wired connectivity over uh, 100 meters or 328 feet. Um, so it actually allows you to send that uncompressed ultra HD uh, multimedia content over that, uh, that connection. And one of the things that I also wanted to mention is that data video is part of the HD Base T alliance. So that's how we. Uh, we're a member and we incorporate the, you know, this technology into some of our products, specifically our, our PTC-150T robotic cameras. Uh, we have some tr transmitters and receivers. And we also have, uh, I believe, the world's first portable HD base T switcher, which is our HS-1500T. Um, so we'll kind of touch on that a little bit, little bit later on, but now that we've kind of got a, a definition of it, and Justin gave a good uh, explanation. Oh, thank you. Uh, what is different? We, we hear a lot about PoE. PoE is usually used in networking where you have, uh, you know, devices on a network that, like switches and things like that, that can inject power to power, let's say, security cameras and things like that. So how is PoE different from HD Base T? Well, with, uh, with PoE, it's not uh, typically carrying uncompressed video over it. So generally, also, the amount of power it can transfer is less than what HG Base T can do. Um, there is a new PoE standard coming out this year, which gets closer to that 100 watts that HG Base T will transmit over the four pairs. 
But other than that, HG Base T is more versatile for the devices that support and utilize it. All right, so um, let's get started with talking about uh, cabling. Um, because cabling kind of comes up uh, quite a bit. We get, um, sometimes our customers don't necessarily know the correct type of cable that they should be using. And sometimes what that does is it creates some problems um, down the line in their installations or you know uh, a customer that's not quite familiar with with HD base T technology might just assume they can use any network type cable and and utilize it and the problem is is that you're you will run into issues down the line as far as connectivity or signal loss things like that so one of the things I wanted to point out was that HD base T um, does have some specific requirements as far as cabling. Um, the minimal amount as far as the specification supports is CAT5E uh, solid core cable. Um, we specifically don't recommend uh, CAT5E. We would recommend just going ahead and going with CAT6 because it's a, it's a later standard uh, and there's some benefits to that as well. So what I wanted to show you first uh, if we can get a close-up shot of this. This is basically a standard patch cable that I've basically removed the end on. So let me kind of show you that you have the standard network molded network connector on the one side and then you've got stranded wiring on this side. Uh, the stranded wiring is really, really thin gauge. Uh, so to transmit HDBase-T, since we're sending power over it, um, it's not really adequate to maintain a consistent power level. Yeah, exactly, Justin, it's thumbs down on that. So no patch cable should be used for utilizing HD base T. Uh, so now what I'm gonna show you is uh, basically uh, the bare minimum of what we would probably recommend, which is this is an unshielded cable. You'll see that there's no foil around it. The jacket's kind of thin, but it is a solid core cable, so it would work um, but there isn't any type of protection against um, what Justin will point out in a bit, um, which is, you know, some interference, things like that. Um, yes, networking cable in general has uh, twists in it to alleviate, you know, try to reduce some of that, but this would actually be like the bare minimum type of cable that we would probably recommend for HD base T. Uh, what we would recommend is something to this level, which is basically a Belden cable. Um, we, we're not specifically endorsing Belden, but Belden makes a good quality cable. Uh, they're a well-known manufacturer. Um, this specific cable is, uh, the model is a 2183R, which this one would be used for, you know, uh, live events, things like that, where you didn't, weren't gonna actually permanently install the cable. But they do offer, I believe, a 2183P, which is a plenum-based cable. Um, plenum-based cable is geared for in-wall installation. So it's rated for fire uh, re retardant and things like that to, to, you know, to, to meet building codes. But you, you can research that a little bit further on the Belden specifications page for that cable. But what I wanted to point out here is that this cable actually has, this little wire here is actually a drain wire. It has a foil shield and it has bonded twisted pairs. So you'll see that there's four here. And it's also a solid core cable, meaning that it's not strand cables wrapped around in a circle. They're actually a solid core and it has a little bit thicker gauge. So if we kind of compare the two, you'll see that the gauge in thickness is quite a bit more between a patch cable. Um, and what the foil jacket does is it helps to, to reduce any type of uh, interference that you might encounter. And Justin, uh, maybe you can elaborate a little bit about uh, you know, interference or things that you could get with running multiple cables. Yeah, so in reading about HGBase-T, you may have come across the term alien crosstalk. And uh, what they're referring to is in a denser installation, say you have a large number of cameras or other HD base T devices and you're running cable, they may get to a point in the wiring that you have a group of cables bunched together. Now, with cables without that shielding, the risk of uh, interference 
from basically one cable leaking into another is increased and that can lead to intermittent signal loss or no output signal at all. So that foil shielding that uh, Stephen demonstrated is designed to help reduce and eliminate that and basically have it you know, be rated for running multiple cables together in parallel. For lighter installs, maybe only a couple cameras and you don't really have them running for great lengths in parallel. For the cabling, you may be able to get away with a standard 5E or 6A solid core cable without that shielding. But depending on the requirements of the installation, or for general production use, if you're gonna just have the cable be loose all the time and not run it in wall or against the floor. In that case, uh, you may have a little more flexibility, but I think it's always better to be uh, safe than frustrated. Yeah, exactly. So what are the benefits as a customer or as an integrator uh, to going this route versus a traditional route. So a traditional route would be uh, in the case of our cameras, let's say. So we've, we've got our cameras. The cameras require power. They require uh, a video signal connection. Uh, they require uh, tally and they t require a control cable. So, so typically you'd have four, four different types of cables that you'd have to run. Uh, wait, power, yeah, power, <laughs> signal, control, yeah, power signal control tally. I'd say three, but anyways, um, we can kind of elaborate on that. So it reduces the, the need to actually run three separate cables. And also, one of the major benefits of it is that you, you don't actually have to have a local power uh, outlet nearby where you're going to mount your camera. Uh, a lot of our customers are, are purchasing these for either boardrooms or they're purchasing them for uh, houses of worship and they have to mount these in certain locations that probably weren't designed originally to have a camera mounted there. Uh, so in, in a lot of instances you'd have to have you know, a permit set up to actually have an electrician come out and put a wall outlet into uh, your, your electrical circuit which is, you know, is going to be costly. Um, and it's going to actually add time to your to your build or your you know obviously your installation. So the benefit of HD Base T is that you can take a camera, you can place it where you want, and you're only going to need to run one low voltage classified cable to the camera. And we'll kind of elaborate a little bit on that uh, further. Um, so that's the major benefit of it. You're you're reducing essentially multiple cables and, and dealing with power outlets uh, down to one cable. And uh, the other benefit is that you don't have to run extension cords running from one outlet, which really is only designed for a temporary use, not, not to be using something all the time in that manner. So um, that's the major benefit is that you're cutting it down to one cable. So I think uh, at this point, maybe we can kind of show an example of uh, how, how a general, maybe we can pull that graphic up of showing how you have an HD base T setup. So there you have it on the screen. So basically what you see is the camera, there's uh, the HD base T cable uh, connected to a receiver box. The receiver box is basically, uh, it's kind of like the distribution point. What it does is it takes HDMI out of the receiver box and then that can be fed into your switcher or to your streaming encoder or whatever wherever you need to send that signal. It could be a projector. Uh, so that would be where you would actually get your signal output. The other item that you would see there is actually the serial controller, RS-422 control, which is actually connected to our RMC-180 controller. The controller is, is actually allowing you to move the robotic cameras, control their iris, control everything that you need for your production or for your event. Uh, the third item that you're going to see there is power. Power is actually, um, it's injected by a 48 volt power, power supply. And the reason it's 48 volts is because um, over distance, the, the receiver box is actually sending uh, 
DC voltage. So DC voltage over long distances has a voltage drop. It doesn't maintain the same level of voltage. So if you're putting in 48 volts, by the time it reaches the camera at a greater distance, uh, it could drop down to anywhere between 13, maybe 12, right in that range. But the camera can compensate for that with its circuitry as far as uh, dealing with a little bit of a fluctuation. Obviously it won't take the full 48 volts, but uh, by the time it reaches it, it won't be 48 volts any longer anyway. So um, in, in this case, what, we're, what we wanted to show you, maybe Justin, you can show them the, the receiver box itself. Maybe we can get a, a close-up mm -hmm. of that. So I'll turn it right here. So you see on one side it has the HD base T uh, connection and you're going to see that it has the 422 uh, connections off of uh, uh, what we call, it's basically, an H, it's a Phoenix connector, but uh, when you receive it, like if you were to purchase this camera setup, uh, you would actually receive a breakout cable that would break it out to what looks like an Ethernet cable and that would connect to the controller. Uh, on this side, we'll show you that it has uh, the 48 volt power, which is here you're going to see that you have DVIP control, which is IP control, which well, we can get into that later in a future video unless you have specific questions about that, but it's basically IP control for the camera. And then we have an HDMI output, which we mentioned would go out to a switch or a projector or some other type of device. Um, so that's, that's one way that, um, that we utilize it in our application is that you have the camera and you have the receiver box. Um, Justin, what could a customer do, let's say, if they had bought uh, a PTC-150 camera, which is one of our, our, our standard cameras that doesn't have a transmitter for HD base T in it, is there a way that they could incorporate that into you know, their application to utilize HD base T? I'm glad you asked, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> no, we have the uh, HBT-10 transmitter. So uh, this box right here looks just like the HBT-11 and can be combined in, uh, with another, or I'm sorry, with a 150 camera, and it has the 12-volt uh, DC power tap that will go to the camera, and then the HG base T connection, and then you will go from the uh, RJ45 connector for RS422, would be connected to this, and then on the other end, this will go to the joystick controller. I uh, just want to take a quick moment to answer one of our comment questions from the audience. Uh, Dave asked uh, on YouTube if there was uh, any chance we would support NDI. Uh, be not at this time. Um, there's no support for NDI uh, for these devices. And Caverde on YouTube also asked, uh, how can you connect the tally in the HBT11? The uh, tally is provided over the RS422. So from this Phoenix terminal block connector, it will go to our RMC-180 controller. And then from our RMC-180 controller, there's a uh, D-sub connector that would then be connected to the switcher. So the tally uh, information would be sent from the switcher to the controller. There's lights on the controller so that the uh, joystick operator would know what camera is on program or, or preview. And then that in turn would be passed along to the camera and these tally lights would light up either red or green. And so like Stephen was saying earlier, just a quick recap is that the HBT10 that you see here in this box, this circuitry is built into the 150T camera. So the transmitter's built in and meaning you just have a single cable and a single breakout box for your video and uh, control. So I think that, that's a pretty good summation of, of basically what, what our products do. One of the other products that I had mentioned earlier was our HS1500T, which we can show in a, a future video. But basically what that does is it has the receiver portion already built into the switcher, so it allows you to eliminate that. Actually, I, I don't think I mentioned the different models of the cameras that we have with this technology. Which quite is, a few. Yeah, which is quite a few. There's, there's basically a PC-150T, which you'll see here, which is the, the dark colored blue camera, uh, or what may look like a black camera on, on camera. 
And then we've got a, a white camera here that is actually our PTC 150 TW. W designation is for the white color. And then we have one that is a PTC 150 TL, which doesn't actually have the receiver box incorporated with it, but it's meant to be uh, connected to our HS 1500, which already has the receiver box. So that kind of is, a, is kind of the summary of our HD base T product line that, that we you know, utilize. And one of the things that we should probably point out is uh, a lot of our customers that have purchased this setup sometimes forget to uh, set the dip switches accordingly and sometimes they don't get control. So maybe we can show a shot of that. So on this camera I think we have the dip switches uh, here. Maybe you can get a, a close-up of it. But basically the thing to remember is dip switch one and four need to be in the on position. Otherwise you might not get uh, control that you're expecting or with the camera. Uh, so I don't know if you could see it there but it's okay. So go ahead and change over to that one. And one of the things that we should also mention is um, there is a lot of good information on uh, hdbasedt.org, uh, which can actually give you a lot of information about the full standard and um, basically, you know, do's and don'ts relating to it, uh, which might be perfect for um, some of our installers, um, which a lot of them might already have that knowledge, but uh, maybe certain people that might not be familiar with it might that might be helpful to them. Um, and at this point, I think uh, probably can just turn it into maybe a question and answer so I should see if there's many more questions relating to this. Yeah, um, two more questions I'm going to want to answer. First, I want to just go quickly into the dip switches in a little more detail. Uh, the reason dip switch one is on is basically it's Visca ID one. So with our cameras, the way they're wired to con the controller or the network for app control, is that they're basically home run. So each camera has an ID of one because we're not daisy chaining them. If they were wired, custom wired to be daisy chained, then they would be run with different ID numbers in sequence. But we simplify it so that you can home run each camera to the controller. They're all ID one. So that's why dip switch number one is on. If dip switch four is off, then the RS422 port the top port on the camera, top RJ45, is active, and that would just be run a uh, network cable, RJ45 to RJ45, straight to the joystick controller. But when dip switch four is on, like it would be out of the box when you buy the 150T, it is set up so that the HD base T port is active, and for the serial control. If dip switch four is off, this camera will still power on and have power and video from the HBT11, but the, if it's off, then the serial control would be from the RS-422 port. But typically you would run dip switch 4 on and everything into this box and then split it out to the uh, switcher and joystick controller. Uh, we did have a question from Chamlin1234 asking if uh, the receiver works with other switchers. Uh, for video, absolutely, because it's just an uncompressed HDMI signal up to 1080p60. And in this case, these cameras, they're set to 5994. Now, for, uh, for serial control, you would use either our RMC180 controller or one of our applications. It also uses the Visca protocol, so if you program your own software, uh, you can then use that to control the camera. And we also had a question uh, regarding if it had instant replay and uh, it's not built into the camera. We have, uh, probably do a future video on it, the HDR10 uh, replay unit and RMC400 replay controller. All right, and uh, let's see here. I'm seeing that there was one. Oh, someone is asking if, uh, where can they get a Tech Corner t-shirt? Actually, we don't even have a Tech Corner t-shirt yet. <laughs> yeah, we need one. <laughs> maybe in a future video. Um, uh, we're thinking that maybe we can do something fun further down the line, maybe a giveaway for uh, some of our viewers, uh, which would be fun. Um, 
but no, not yet. We we just got our new tech corner background that you can see here, uh, but we don't uh, we don't have shirts yet. We gotta get no, shirts. No, I know we're still yeah. these data video ones. Yeah, just data video shirts. Sorry, at this point. Uh, I want to take a moment too to show off the twenty one eighty three R cable that we were talking about earlier. Um, these connectors. I don't know if we can get a close up on this, but. These heavy-duty connectors uh, basically have a, they can be disassembled and you can change them to a female for coupling or extension. So it's kind of like a flexible, uh, heavy-duty connector uh, for this cable, which is kind of neat. Yeah, and you actually don't ru ruin the end because it actually has a re reusable connection point that it just kind of slips in like a sleeve. Uh, and they're locking connectors as well. Yeah. makes it nice. Yeah, because we, we use this cable for production demos because of the heavy duty nature, you know, especially with foot traffic and, and uh, you know, other damaging things of that nature. Uh, you know, these cables hold up in those tougher environments. Let's see. Let's see if we have any other... No other any questions. Any other comments or questions that we'd be glad to answer? Um, maybe we'll kind of hold it. For a second. Okay, so I think uh, I think at this point I think we're going to probably wrap it up a little bit. Uh, so, just want to thank our crew for helping us out today, which is actually part of our tech and marketing team. Uh, and all of our, for the most part, all of our production was really done on data video products, which is kind of nice. So, um, again, I want to remind everybody if you have an idea for future episodes. Um, Go ahead and send us an email again at techcorner at datavideo.com. And oh, sorry. thank you for joining us. <laughs> Remember to follow us on Facebook and um, Instagram and Twitter as well. So um, thank you very much. Goodbye. Bye. Bye.